Isabella Bird, or Mrs Bishop as she became, was one of the 19th century's most remarkable women travellers. Her intrepid global travels and her subsequent travel books made her famous at home and abroad. At first glance, she does not appear to be made for extensive and challenging travel. For a start, she's a little under five foot. Also, from an early age and throughout her long life, she suffered from terrible health problems. However, travel was the perfect and invigorating tonic. For the Edinburgh Medical Journal, she was the invalid at home, but the Samson abroad. John Murray, as well as being Isabella's lifelong publisher, was also one of her closest friends. It is through her books and the papers in the John Murray Archive at the National Library of Scotland that we get an insight into Isabella's colourful life and travels. One review of Isabella's travels books in The Spectator noted, Miss Bird is an ideal traveller. She can see, and she can use the words that place what she sees before the reader. Not the least noteworthy amongst Miss Bird's gift is a heaven-sent faculty for having adventures. What adventures? She visited Japan, India, the Persian Gulf, Tibet, Egypt, Australia and New Zealand. She fell in love with one-eyed desperado named Rocky Mountain Jim in Colorado. She was the first woman to climb the world's highest volcano in Hawaii. She rode elephants through the Malaysian jungle and visited Armenian and Nestorian communities in Kurdistan. China's Yangtze Valley was explored in an 8,000 mile trip. She was pursued with howls and curses by fanatics through Ishafan in Iran. In Korea, she was granted private audiences with the king and queen before war forced her to flee the country. In her 70s, she rode with the Berbers over a thousand miles across the desert in the high Atlas Mountains on a massive black stallion. What adventures! Adventures that were shared with the eager readers of her Murray published books. Her later works were beautifully illustrated with her own photographs. Isabella was a keen photographer, and despite bulky and heavy equipment, ill-suited to extensive travel, she managed to produce beautiful photographs of the landscapes, buildings and people she encountered. Isabella was an engaging writer, detailing her experiences of travel, her encounter with the unknown. Her letters to her sister Henrietta in Scotland and her publisher and friend John Murray are wonderful. These letters are basis for her subsequent travel books are special, not just for their eloquence and the wealth of detail, but for their length. For example, one letter to her sister, written for the Malay Peninsula, is a remarkable 116 pages long. This letter is known as the Great Peric Letter, and she had written it as an introduction that this cannot be a this great letter. This cannot be a great letter, because one native state is so like another, and there is by now very little to say. After 116 pages, this was patently not true, and she scored this sentence out. Isabella gave many talks on her travels, including to the Royal Geographical Society, of which she was the first female fellow admitted. Despite a life of dangerous travel, where she had suffered from frostbite, sinking up to her neck in snowdrifts, broken arms, ribs and bones, cholera, volcano burns and singes, attacks and several near drownings, she died not on some deserted plain, high mountain or rapid river, but peacefully in her Edinburgh home. She was a week from her 73rd birthday, her bags were optimistically packed and ready for a return visit to China. Her Royal Geographical Society journal obituary noted, The distinguished traveller Mrs Isabella Bishop died at Edinburgh on October 7th. For the extent and the value of the information she brought home from her wanderings, she may be ranked with the most accomplished travellers of her time. Whilst amongst the many lady travellers who have come before the public during this past half century, her title to the foremost place can hardly be challenged. Music